Taina Buasa Dean, uh, works in the arts, education, and science sectors. She is of Ngai Tu Oi and Pacific Island ancestry and resides in the northern reaches of Te Uruwera rainforest. The things dearest to Taina, Wano, Apu, and Iwi, and she does not see these parts of her life as distinct from the forest she lives in, but indeed sees them as one and the same. E te uinga, e te tuinga, o mai te piki paki paki ki tēnei wa e netua. Tuatahi tonu atu ko te, ko te whakahoki atu anu hoki i te whakamiha nui ki runa i te ringa nā nā tātau i whakatapu i te atane, tēnā nō ki koe te pakeke. Ko nga kui o korau a nga pakeke huri noi tēne o tātau whare miharo a nei te uta atu anu hoki i te aro haro ha nui ki runa ki a koutou. Eee... Hei tīmatana ko Rero Māku, pēa ko te huriake anu hoki ki te waine uri o Hawaii. Nā nā tātau, i whakahono rei tēnei ata. Ko te hohonu, ko te whānui anu hoki o tōna te tiro i tana ao i runa i te whenua wana tīpuna tonu. Kia ora mai rā tātau. Kia ora tātau koutou nā wai tapu. Koutou nga waitapu o nehe, o nga matatonu, koutou o te tawhito. I te oroko tanga mai anu hoki o te hānui o i o he wai. Ka parati haere te nga wai ki roto o te tawhito, no te tawhito anu. Ka hānui mai, ka wai ewe mai, ki e tahi ko taua wai ewe, hi inua atu anō tōna, ko te wai nui ātea. Ka heke haere, ka heke haere, ka puta, ko te kore kore, ko te rapu, ko te whainga nui, ko te kukune, Ko te hihiri, ko te mahara, he wai anō te mahara. Ko te wānanga, ko te whewhe, ko te āhua, ko te atamai. Ko te ao, ka pō, ka wā, ka ātea katoa tātau, te ao, ka awatea katoa atu. Ko te pū, ko te more, nā te wai i puta katoa mai wene. Ka tahi nei, ka puta ko rangi rao ko papa. I te piri tana mai o rangi rao ko papa, nga te wai anō rāua i piri. Ko te inua o taua wai ki o kukuia ko raua, ko te pū wera wera. Ka o tia tu ki te kōrero, he atua, he tipua, He tangata. Tihau mauri ora kia tātou, ki te whaiau, ki te ao mārama. Good morning to us all. Firstly, I just wish to quickly acknowledge our most esteemed manuhiri from, as tangata whenua, from her lands and her seascapes and waterscapes of Hawaii. It was the most, it was the most stimulating and dynamic insightfulness and mindfulness shared with us from across the great expanses of the oceans uh, to her land. A couple of things I picked up very quickly from her, which I might pinch into my next conference, <laughs> were very interesting kiwaha like get smart, get, wa get wise, get some wisdom. Uh, 
also indigenous literacies, taking from your mind and making it happen in your body. Ah, ko te whakaaro nui tēnā me tīnana te mahi. Waiho mātou mahi koe kōrero. Ah, koe nā te tika no tērā wana karanga. Mātou mahi koe kōrero. Kaua mā te kupu ana he. Kaua e noho te mahi ki te nutu no aiho. Koe nā nā tohu tohu au tātou pākeke. Ne. Ah, kā re 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 ke atu wana ki waha wana whakatau ki ki wā tātai. Ah, ko te whakaaro nui me tīnana. What is poor and what is disadvantaged, what's unhealthy and what is healthy? What is our knowledge and what is uh, knowledge that belongs to another world, that STEM does not belong to the Western world? I liked all those things. So good morning again. Firstly, I want to also acknowledge uh, the hands that brought forth the divine blessings upon us all to give us safety today uh, in this gathering and, and, and upon this place, uh, including all that abounds within it. Namhi nui kia kite tohuna kia tātou kato, all the attendees to this conference. My name is Taina Boasadin. I reign from Te Urewera. Uh, I'm also of Tahitian, Atuan, and Mokian extract. My father never liked that description. However, the, uh, come from the largest Eastern Bay of Plenty inland tribe known as Ngai Tuhoi. We are kaitiaki of one of the largest rainforests in the country. I am one of the advisors to uh, a group called Manaki Te Awanui Charitable Trust based in the Tauranga area, an organization with a youthful, dynamic and insightful set of young minds and hearts. Uh, I acknowledge the wisdoms of my companion advisors in that organization, uh, Leonard, uh, uh, Riha, and Rion. Uh, I've been asked to speak on a topic of my choice, which I might add was quite a dangerous thing to ask me to do, <laughs> to offer a person such as myself. Anyway, here we go. To quote one of my most learned mentors in Papa Pumo Atamati Kruger, uh, who I have been raised with, I wish to set off on a few facts about why. Water. From an instinctive and intuitive standpoint, uh, as a Tuhoi woman, and then I'd like to cover some fairly well-known general facts thereafter since my topic is about sensing with a tuhoi instinct and a tuhoi intuition, the presence, paying attention, and the qualities and the characteristics of natural phenomena, why being one of the most dominant across the universe. Why, number one, is omnipresent. I had to look up in the dictionary what that meant. Why is omnipresent? Why has a modi and it has potency? Why has a natural allure? And why has an attraction? So drink lots of water if on one particular day you don't feel so attractive. Why has an attraction element to it? And why has a soul? Hence the Māori word, te matawairua. Why has an enormous power? It has a physicality and it has a spiritual dimension. It is emotional and it has an undeniable intellect. Why? Hence, one of our most traditional ancient phrases, ko te hiringa o te mahara, speaks to a primordial intellect that is transported and transmitted by wai. After all, it is the quintessential ingredient that houses your brain. The name given to the fluid invoked at the tahuhu of your tipuna whare 
is referred to by my people as the Wai Orua Fetu, that which protects the repositories and the house of knowledge. Why, as with all parts of the natural world, has a mana, it has a modi, it has a tapu, and it has a noa, which I will cover again very soon. Here's some general facts. Where there is why, there is life. A rather compelling argument to support modi and mana, is it not? H2O is only the second uh, second to hydrogen as the most common molecule in the universe. Why regulates the temperature of the earth? 70% of the earth is covered in why. 75% of a tree in Te Urewera, and I can vouch for this, I've gone and measured that myself. 70% of a tree in Te Urewera forest is contented with why. 60% of the human body is why. All natural foods we eat is where we gain most of our why from. All water on the planet arrived on an asteroid. Hence, the kōrero of our tipuna, uh, ia humai te wai, ia rangirao ko papa. Why helps circulate our blood and pushes all the blood to your brain? It pulls blood to your brain, that's its modus operandi. And our ancestors gave alternative names, many names, lots of synonyms for the part of our, uh, that part of our body, our anatomy, known as the brain, one of them being wairoro and the other being Waitapu. Water is a sticky substance. Where there is water, I told you, uh, I shared with you earlier that there is attraction. Water is attracted to its own kind. It's attracted uh, to its own kind in the form of lakes, and rivers and streams and oceans. There's more water in the atmosphere than there is on the earth. Hence the call of our tipu, our ancestral, one of our ancestral phrases and deep, deep knowings and mindfulness of our tipuna in their awareness and consciousness, their consciousness about why in the atmosphere. Uh, we cannot survive without why. We can go for a few days without food, um, some of us 24 hours, <laughs> others a couple of weeks, some people maybe a month, but that simply won't abide with way. Uh, we can, cannot survive without way. Koe nei te karanga o tātou tīpuna kui o kuroua, ko te tino kai, ko te wai. The same volume of why exists today as it existed 240 million years ago. So the issue is not about whether or not we have enough water or whether we have the same volume of water that we enjoyed during the days of the dinosaurs. We have the same why here as we had, had done at the beginning of the time, at the beginning of the development of the earth. The same why, volume of why is with us. The issue is whether or not we have enough clean why. So we speak of why carrying this omnipresence, this omnipresent quality. As two hui children and grandchildren having the ability uh, to understand where to locate specific gardens uh, using the sense, a sense that we refer to and an intuition that my old people refer to as te a.
as a fifth generational gardener in my valley, in my Tuhoi Valley in Duatoki, I often heard the old women in my valley and in my Tipuna Fare speak about the A. The A, in other words, is your ability as a Tuhoi child to follow the aura of your past over ancestors, to understand the land and where to locate gardens. To understand where to locate dry and wet gardens, including those that are located in the waterscapes of your whenua. To know where gardens should go is natural and is normal when you follow the R. It's considered a very serious impediment among my people if you possess an inability to practice this. You are said to have been undereducated. And your parents and grandparents are often berated for a lack of passing on reliable ancestral knowledge to assess your to assist your practice, to ensure the welfare of your whanau and your hapu are collectively fed and taken care of. The notions underpinning whakapapa, tikanga, mana, maori, tapu, and noa, these are words that are sometimes thrown around uh, like a new pair of shoes or an old pair of shoes um, in different sectors in uh, particular uh, government departments and different forms of legislation that are uh, often taken for granted. So I'd like to go over some of the virtues and the cultural constructs that underpin a, uh, what I believe to be uh, Māori constructs, not just Tuhoi specific constructs, Māori constructs generally that underpin a certain belief, set of belief systems and values that build the resilience around an intuition and the science of being able to sense what needs to be done on the whenua and on the waterscapes. Whakapapa. The teachings of my community, not just the old people, but those who have been fortunate uh, to retain uh, such knowledge over the generations, that one of the most potent and vital forces in the entire universe uh, for my people, and I'm sure for many of your people, is the notion of whakapapa. It's popularly described as being something that connects us by blood tie. Uh, it's uh, something that's arranged in this way, and then we can recite it that way often. And that's pretty much where its description comes to a halt. Whakapapa is also these things and it's absolutely imperative. It becomes the indigenous knowledge pathway of Tuhoi children. That when they hear the word whakapapa, that the whakapapa means first and foremost responsibility. That within the construct of whakapapa is the first principle uh, uh, known as responsibility, that you are born into responsibility, you are not born into entitlement. Whakapapa and my tipuna whare at home permits you to simply sit in the whare and listen. It does not give you the right to speak yet. The tea towel in the kitchen gives you the right to speak after five years or 10 years of using the tea towel, showing us your expertise with the tea towel. And then you have suddenly built some stamina and some resilience around your whakapapa. Whakapapa on its own simply does not allow you to access your entitlement and obligations must be undertaken. So that dualism between the two, the relationship between obligation, responsibility and entitlement, they move together and they mean whakapapa. He <laughs>
<laughs> Very good. So whakapapa is the most vital force in the universe. It does mean connections and relationships, but it means uh, first and foremost responsibility. It does mean reciprocation, but it doesn't mean reciprocation without obligations. And I guess the simple examples for those of you who tirelessly work in, in, in servitude to your marae and your hapu and your people, we all understand that there is a ranking, there is a high grade and a low grade uh, pathway towards the activation of your entitlements uh, via your whakapapa. One of them is going to the kitchen. Immediately from that, you will graduate to the toilet. Is that not true? <laughs> and if you've spent 10 years in the toilet at the very least, in my case, eh, you'll be invited onto the pie to sit and listen for four years. Not to sing, you're not allowed to sing yet. <laughs> no? So these are, I think, the very seriously graded uh, abilities that give value, that add value and place uh, the responsibilities and obligations clearly on the tasks and on your responsibilities to your people, tikanga. Tikanga uh, is, is, is one of the, tikanga and kawa are one of the most popularly confused, I think, concepts and notions, virtues and principles uh, in the Māori world today. Uh, and I'm not saying I have the answer because I don't, uh, but I do have an ins insight and observation of tikanga in practice in, in, my, in the world I was raised in. Tikanga is how we practice our values. I think we will all agree with that. But tikanga is also uh, a set of practices and values that sets behavioral boundaries. It sets boundaries around how we may or may not behave and limits our behavior and it should transform our behavior so we enjoy transformative and positive outcomes for our people and in our communities. That is the power of tikanga. Wairua. Wairua. Wairua is a heartbeat. I hear lots of different descriptions for wairua, but I think wairua is a heartbeat. Wairua is the core of your Māori well-being, is the core of your being. It has to be balanced with hinengaro, with tinana, and with ngākau. Tapu and noa. Tapu is a really interesting one because constantly, as children, uh, our sense of resilience up against uh, the presence, the omnipresence of tapu was constantly tested. One of them, I'll relate to you very quickly, was being sent into the heart of Te Udewera, uh, one of the oldest and ancient parts of Te Udewera, the virgin forest, and, and you were sent in there for a night to stay on your own overnight. Uh, no food, no water, no blankets, and you were asked to become present and conscious and pay attention while you're in there. The very next morning, four of us emerged from the forest at the age of 15, and we suddenly had a deep and intimate understanding of tapu. Our experience in the forest that night told us, number one, that we were not alone. Secondly, we understood very clearly that we were the smallest, smallest element in the whole scope of that forest. And in fact, we were taught that we were extremely minute and there was something much, much greater than ourselves. Uh, in a nutshell and in summary, what that meant is that we indeed had an experience of tapu, which meant that we were 
confronted with something that was divine and much larger than ourselves. We understood that it had a sanctity of its own. So tapu and no are different levels of sanctity and that sanctity carries a consciousness, a thought and an action of its own. Modi. Modi uh, has been described in many different ways by different people, including uh, professionals and scientists. I think um, Modi uh, is an element and a principle, a virtue that allows us to touch our purpose in life. It gives us a sense of purpose. Modi is us having a sense of purpose. Modi inspires us with intangible qualities. Modi is motivational. Modi provides us with a sense of our self. We immediately permit access to ourselves. It provides us with a sense of self and a collective identity as well. Mana is the product of Modi. Without Modi in existence, we cannot enjoy mana. Mana is an external quality that often is the evidence to those of us outside of our spirit and our body that we are enjoying a certain level of Modi. An example of that, of course, relayed to me by some very insightful, mindful, wise people is that uh, to take knowledge in as food and to ingest it, it must, it must reach your puku. It must reach your stomach. The knowledge as food for your puku. Once it descends and reaches your puku, it emanates outwardly as a bright light. And as you walk into a room, many will comment about the mana that you walk with. And that is because you have understood how to digest and ingest a sense of Modi. Mana is an external expression of power positive power, positive influence, and positive achievement. Mana, as I said earlier, is the external expression of Modi. Modi order is something that we constantly, as Maori communities, constantly seek to pursue in the, in the aspiration and the desire for wellness, for well-being. Modi itself has feeders. According to my old people, Modi itself has critical feeders and drivers. Three of them we know very well, commonly we know as Maori, we know those things very well as different forms of energy. And one of them is ihi, ihi. Ihi feeds Modi, must feed Modi. Ihi are the experiences of being thrilled, that we have experiences in life that thrill us to the core. Many experiences. And the other one, of course, is wehi. Ihi and wehi. Where he is when we are simply awed by the experiences we witness and observe in life. You can be awed by the Grand Canyon. You can be awed by the Central Mountains. You can be awed by the snow on the Central Mountains. You can be awed by a great expanse of ocean. Many things you can be awed by Te Urewera. That is wehi. Ihi, wehi, and the last one, of course, is wana. When we are allured by life to such an extent, 
we simply fall in love with life. That is wanna. When ihi, wehi, and wanna collaborate and intersect together, we have a phenomena known as the elevation of Modi. Koina waku kore roi te nei ate tātau katoa, rai te whakahoki katoa, te anuhoki nā mihi ki runa ki a koutou ki a tātau katoa. Um, thank you for your attention this morning. That's pretty much all I had to prepare at four o'clock this morning for you. Um, as I angst over what I needed to, what, what I might speak to you about as an appropriate topic. However, um, I'd just like to thank you again for the invitation this morning. Um, I think um, uh, some of the topics that have been covered in the last day or so, they have been enormously riveting and I've uh, uh, simply been privileged to be able to have the opportunity to speak to you a little bit about the insights, uh, the insightfulness, the mindfulness of our ancestors, not just my ancestors, our ancestors, and the repositories of knowledge and wisdom uh, that flows through the science of sensing, both intuitively and in a sensory way, uh, that allows us to access a different form of intellect and scientific inquiry and investigation. Tēnā tātou katoa.